Um, Madam Chair, um, in the U.S. today, the top 1% own about 38% of the financial wealth of America. The bottom 60% own 2.3%. One family, the Walton family, is worth over, over $140 billion. That's more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American people. In recent years, we have seen a huge increase in the number of millionaires and billionaires while we continue to have the highest rate of childhood poverty uh, in the industrialized world. Despite this, um, as many of my Republican friends talk about the oppressive uh, Obama economic policies, in the last year, Charles and David Koch struggled under these policies, and their wealth increased by $12 billion in one year, uh, despite the oppressive Obama economic policies. Um, in terms of income, 95% of no, new income generated in this country in the last year went to the top 1%. Now, a study which I've just introduced into the record uh, by two uh, professors uh, from Princeton University, Professor Martin Gillens and Northwestern University Professor Benjamin Page, basically suggest that while historically we have considered our society to be a capitalist democracy, we may now have entered into a phase where we are an oligarchic form of society. In your judgment, given the enormous power held by the billionaire class and their political representatives, are we still a capitalist democracy or have we gone over into an oligarchic form of society in which incredible economic and political power now rests with the billionaire class? So all of the statistics on inequality that you've cited are ones that greatly concern me. And I think for the same reason that you're concerned about them, um, they can shape the, uh, determine the ability of different groups um, to participate equally in a democracy and have grave effects on social stability over time. And so uh, I don't know what to call our system or how to, I prefer not to um, give labels, but uh, there's no question that we've had a trend toward growing inequality. And I personally find it a very worrisome trend that deserves the attention of policymakers. Thank you. I mean, I, I think the point that the professors are making and, and others have made is that there comes a point where the billionaire class has so much political power where the Koch brothers are now, because of Citizens United, able to buy and sell politicians. They have so much political power. At what point is that reversible? And that is a great concern to me. I want to uh, go to a, another point. Uh, some of my colleagues, especially in the House, uh, believe that we can uh, improve lives for the middle class and create jobs uh, by completely repealing the estate tax which applies now to perhaps less than one-tenth of one percent of the wealthiest families in this country. Would it make sense to you to give enormous tax breaks to the families of the top one percent of people in this country? So I've indicated that I share your concern with inequality, but um, I guess I'm going to say on this that it's up to the Congress to decide what's appropriate, and there are a number of different ways to address it that that certainly is on the list. All right, well, let me ask you another question. Uh, some of my friends in the House, in the Ryan budget and so forth, suggest that one way to stimulate the economy to create decent paying jobs is to give more tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country and the largest corporations, despite the massive wealth and income inequality we have right now. If we give tax breaks to the Koch brothers who are worth $80 billion, do you think that's gonna create a whole lot of jobs in this country? Well, I'd say most of the evidence that we have suggests that transfers to lower income people tend to be uh, spent, a larger fraction of a dollar is spent than when there's a transfer to a wealthy individual, but changes in tax policy, so that's from the demand side. Tax policy also has supply side effects that one should take into account. 